welcome to another video on a video series of RCC in this video we'll be discussing about the design of singly reinforced beam as we know a uh, singly reinforced beam is such type of beam in which the reinforcement is provided in the tension zone only so uh, for this I have a question over here that says the design of beam of a span 4 meter to carry an UDL of 25 kN per meter using M20 concrete and FE 415 steel writing down the given terms clear span L is equal to 4 meter load that is UDL 25 kN per meter FCK that is the characteristic strength of the concrete 20 Newton per mm square and FY that is the yield strength of steel 450 Newton per mm square it is also known as tore steel now the very first step is to calculate the depth that is effective depth and width of the beam and this step is avoided when you are provided with the effective depth or overall depth and width in the equation for now we are not provided with the depth and widths we have to calculate the depth and width using some ratio for the depth the ratio of length and depth of the beam is used that is the, the ratio of length and depth is taken in between 10 to 17 and for now i'm taking l by d is equal to 12 length being 4 meter d effective is equal to 0 0.33 m that is meter and we will calculate the effective depth and nearly taking this value as 400 mm and now for width the ratio of width to depth is taken and for this width to depth is equal to 1 by 1.5 and, and it ranges from 2 by 3 to 1 by 2 here d effective by b is equal to 1.5 we can write directly also b is equal to 400 by 1.5 this comes to be 266.67 mm and b can be nearly taken as 300 mm make sure you take value greater than 266.67 or the calculated value because if i provide 260 then the ratio of depth to width does not lie in the range provide effective cover okay that is effective cover not nominal cover because nominal cover is the cover or is the distance between the edge of the bar and edge of the concrete but effective cover is the distance between the edge of the concrete and center of the rebar provided so overall depth d is equal to d plus d dash that is effective depth plus effective cover which comes to be 450 mm now take beam of 300 by 450 mm size second step is to calculate the effective length this will be the first step if we are provided with the width and depth of the beam you can find this in is 456 page 34 clause 22.2 it says for simply supported beam or slab the effective span of a member that is not built integrally with its support shall be taken as clear span plus effective depth of slab or beam or center to center of support whichever is less that it is not built integrally means that it rests over wall or some support which is not built integrally with the beam so first case clear span plus effective depth span being 4 meter and clear depth being 0.4 meter so this comes to be 4.4 meter second case is clear span plus bearing with that is this is center to center distance okay so what is bearing with you can see in this figure the beam rest on a support on both sides so the distance on which the beams rest is known as bearing width or support width so 4 meter plus 0 0.23 by 2 plus 0 0.23 by 2 the total length or the total width of the support is 230 and it rests on the mid span of it so 230 by 2 on both sides it comes to be 4.23 meter so from the code we know lesser value is taken so l effective is equal to 4.23 meter third step is to calculate the load as we are provided with the udl load so udl is equal to 25 kilo newton per meter second is the self weight of the beam in some question uh, you are provided with the udl including the self weight of the beam but for now we are not provided with the self weight so we have to calculate it separately self weight of the beam is equal to gamma concrete that is unit weight of concrete multiplied by its area so gamma concrete into b into d make sure while calculating the self weight you will be taking the overall depth that is capital D so gamma concrete is taken as 2425 according to the question 24 multiply by 0 0.3 into 0 0.45 which comes to be 3.24 kN per meter then total load will be equal to 25 plus 3.24 is equal to 28.34 kN per meter as we are implying limit state method so factor of safety is must so factor load is equal to gamma P into load and gamma p that is partial safety of factor 1.5 into 28.34 is equal to 42.36 kN per meter now the fourth step is to calculate the moment and mor as we know mor is the maximum value of resistance offered for the bending moment in the beam first we will calculate the maximum bending moment 
applied on the beam and will compare with the maximum of its resistance wl square by 8 for the case of udl make sure you will take the effective length okay so 42.36 is the weight calculated factored load multiplied by 4.23 square divided by 8 this comes to be 94.74 kilonewton meter and moment of resistance that is maximum resistance is equal to 0.138 fck bd square and this is for fe 415 xc is equal to 0.48 d so we can calculate the value for mor in the form of 0.138 fck bd square 0.138 into 20 into 300 into 400 square 132.48 kilonewton meter now comparing the calculated or maximum moment and maximum moment resistance we find that since moment of resistance mor is greater than maximum moment so beam is designed as singly reinforced that is the reinforcement provided on the tension zone will be enough to resist the moment now the fourth fifth step is to calculate the reinforcement as beam is designed for under reinforced section as i have already discussed in the introduction part that the section we will be designing will be under reinforced for under reinforced case that is xu is less than xu limiting so then from is 456 page 96 annex g mu is equal to 0.87 fy ast d 1 minus ast by bd fck so we will be designing for the maximum moment now reinforcement shall be provided to withstand the maximum moment so maximum moment is 94.74 kilonewton meter so 94.74 into 10 to the power 6 is equal to 0.87 fy ast into 400 by 1 minus ast into 415 divided by 300 into 400 into 20 for this we will be providing effective depth okay so ast is equal to on solving we get 754.418 mm square now we have to arrange this steel to achieve this area of steel for which we will be providing a bar size of diameter 16 mm then area of individual bar is equal to pi d square by 4 and this d is the diameter of bar provided that is 16 so it comes to be 201.062 mm square now number of bars can be calculated because we have the total area of steel and individual area of steel so for this total area of steel divided by area of steel for individual case is equal to 3.75 which can be nearly taken as 4 nos we will be providing four number of bars then area of steel provided is equal to 4 into pi d square by 4 for here d is equal to 16 then 804.24 mm square now we have to check whether the area of steel provided is sufficient or not okay we have to compare with the minimum requirement and maximum requirement so the sixth step is for check for reinforcement you can find this on is 456 page 46 and 47 clause 26.5 so for minimum reinforcement and maximum reinforcement minimum reinforcement is equal to ast minimum is equal to 0 0.85 into bd divided by fy and substituting the value of bd fy we get this as 245.78 mm square which is less than area of steel provided okay so the minimum criteria is fulfilled and maximum reinforcement that is the area of steel provided should not be greater than the area is still max so four percent of gross area of beam so whenever you hear the gross area you have to take the overall depth you will not be taking the effective dimension okay so for maximum reinforcement four percent of gross area is equal to 0 0.04 into b into d as I said, we will be taking the overall depth. So, 0 0.04 into B into D, 0 0.04 into 300 by 300 into 450. This comes to be 5400 mm square, which is greater than that of the area of steel provided. So, it is also okay. Uh, we complete the design of singly reinforced beam. Uh, I hope I was able to make you clear about the concept. If I was, then like and subscribe. Thank you.